Hi everyone, I'm Stuart, an experienced designer and diagram nerd. Hi, I'm Julia, a strategic designer and systems thinker. This is our lightning conversation on the topic, metaphor as boundary. So I'm coming at this from a semantic philosophical perspective. I think metaphors, correctly applied, provide structure in the form of boundaries. And I'm coming from a systems interrelational perspective. I believe the structure of meaning is subjective and subject to change. So Julia, why do you think we need boundaries? Well, Stuart, I think boundaries are containers, a line in the sand, if you will, and as such, they're a threshold of meaning what is in, what is out. Boundaries aim to contain meaning. Definitions are bound and rebound by what we attribute to words, senses, pictures, and shared understandings. But to have and to hold boundaries temporary, like the line in the sand, the imprint can fade with time, wind, change. Meaning can shift with different contextual interpretations through different lenses. What do you think, Stuart, could you give us an example of a metaphor? Well, I'd like to use the example you just mentioned, Julie, the, the example of a lens as a metaphor, taken from the domain of physics as applied to the domain of organizations. It was the use of lens applied to the idea of digital transformation that really sparked this conversation for me. Basically, I think this metaphor is applied incorrectly most of the time. You typically hear phrases like the six lenses of digital transformation to describe things like people, process, technology, etc. Now, semantically speaking, that's not a lens. At best, it's a window in terms of metaphor, as these are no more than categories with little context. When applied correctly, as in digital transformation as a lens, this metaphor can provide clear bounded context for action, whether telescoping out to future vision or microscoping down into some crucial detail of operational process. To borrow a phrase from information architecture world, metaphors when applied correctly provide structural integrity of meaning. That's very interesting. But for metaphors to succeed, you have to be able to break things down, even if you don't know the domain, which usually comes into two parts. The structural mapping of one concept versus the next, such as woods for trees, um, lives of a push and pull of a pictorial tension. Stuart, would you be able to share your thoughts about the binary nature of metaphor? Well, the answer for me is that there is no binary. Um, at best, metaphors gain temporary footholds in helping us to structure our thoughts about the world until the next one comes along. There's only really flow between one mapping and the next, and the value of maps is limited by their relevance over time. What about boundaries? Yeah, for boundaries to succeed, you have to agree where you draw the line. You can draw it further out or closer in. And whereas metaphor Whereas the metaphor of a lens lives of the convergence of a vantage point, a boundary can fill the whole of a viewfinder. But neither of these concepts can picture the whole. You will always have blind spots. This is true, but with complex systems, you don't really get to choose a vantage point. As Myron Rogers said, you need to start anywhere and follow it everywhere. So in that sense, it doesn't really matter what metaphor you pick. If it matches your circumstances and you believe it's useful, then just apply it rigorously. Yes, but from a systems perspective, it is impossible to just apply one metaphor, as there are so many perspectives. When you're trying to separate the woods from the tree, the metaphor loses structure. And then there is the feedback loop that occurs with a time delay that presents itself when interpreting meaning the core structure of metaphor will have changed shape through time. So essentially, boundaries themselves are forms of metaphors. So what you're mapping against becomes fluid as well. Metaphors, boundaries, systems, none of these sit outside of our direct experience. These are not objective things in the world outside of us, despite the best efforts of philosophers to prove otherwise. All of these are really just reflections of our natural patterning abilities as humans. The metaphors that are in our minds, and so are the boundaries. But where we choose to look and apply these patterns is, is an act of choice. The challenge that you have with metaphors and boundaries, especially in the context of transformation, is that different purposes confer different vantage points that can never completely converge in the sense of physics. So in a sense, the arbitrariness of definition is a human condition. 
I think that's a lovely melancholic note on which to end our conversation. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, everyone.